I got in you. It seems to be that every time I pull the trigger, I didn't, uh, didn't get a chance to review the agenda because I didn't die. <laughs> I was kind of doing that anyway. As interim or just bypassing interim all the other? I, I believe you'd be sworn in as interim. I think that's the way it's worded. But so that, that, if that's the case, that's not what we were told. It doesn't read that way. Sounds like quite a gathering. Yes. Yeah. 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 Is there an agenda? I, mean, I was just coming for the public question. <laughs> I was under the understanding that it meant so, perhaps I was under the understanding that we were taking a year to continue looking.
Hunter, you ready to start? Uh, we need a minute? No, yeah, hold on. Okay. Something we're adding to the agenda. I did. Do it right after the swearing in. question for you. If someone wanted to like serve on a state board or something, you would be the contact person for that? Yeah. <clears throat> Happy to facilitate them getting that application into the governor's office. And, and certainly as important as it is for people to serve on town boards, it's important for us to also serve on state boards. Yeah, we actually approve dozens of nominations at every meeting. And I, I'm fully aware that if not for all the volunteer work that people do in this state, our state would come to a reaching halt. So I thank all the volunteers locally and at the state level as well. Okay. Thank you. 
Does anyone have any questions for Cindy while she's here? Comments or such? All right. You'll see me a lot over the next couple okay. of weeks. And congratulations to you and police Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Next up, we have swearing in an introduction of our new police chief, Stephen A. Lee, Alex Lee, uh, Hunter. Would you like to? Okay. Okay. All right, Hunter. Yes. So, <clears throat> um, if I can digress just a little bit from the uh, stated agenda. Um, we, have, we have really two steps to this process, so I, I ask for your indulgence. And the first one is um, we can't really move forward without acknowledging the past. And so as you know, for the last six months, six and a half, <laughs> six and a half would, might, might have been longer if not for the uh, intervention of, of uh, certain people. But um, for the past six, and, six plus, plus months, um, we have enjoyed um, the uh, interim police chief services of Barry Hunter, and you, we, you all, I think, know Barry and know of his history. Barry has put in uh, 44 years, 45 years, uh, of service to New Hampshire and, and law enforcement in New Hampshire. Um, <clears throat> I often tease him that he'll, he's forgotten more about law enforcement than I'll ever know. And Barry was off minding his own business. Uh, enjoy a retirement. I understand he has a tractor he's rather fond of, um, and a wife, of course. Um, but despite that, we were able to coax him out of retirement uh, to come and, and, and assist us in our transitions to a new police chief. And he was kind enough to do that and served us well. And I, I don't want to move, take the next step forward uh, without acknowledging his kind and generous contribution to our community. We could not have gotten a higher caliber um, uh, candidate for, to help us through this process than Barry Hunter, and I personally and professionally um, respect and, and appreciate his willingness to come out of retirement and assist us um, during this time of transition. So I, I, I don't want to not say, say thanks to him on behalf of the town and our staff. He's been a great resource uh, and asset to us, and he has uh, volunteered to uh, be available, um, maybe I shouldn't have said that, but um, he's volunteered to be available on an as-needed basis from time to time, which really speaks to the, to the quality of the man and his dedication to the public. Um, he's given it more than we've passed. So, Barry, I thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. So without further ado, we're going to move to the next chapter, and I do want to uh, I do want to acknowledge. Yes, Hunter. But before we do that, no, I can do that after, if you don't mind. Okay. So I do I, I do want to acknowledge that when it comes to all of our employees, um, but sometimes most starkly um, our public safety employees, fire and police, ambulance staff, but that I often say, you know, we we ask these people to step forward and to serve their communities, we ask them to run into places that most of us are running out of. Um, and it takes a certain character um, and commitment to one's community to do that, to know that you are running into places that everybody else wants to run away from, whether it be a fire or a crime or a major event of some sort. That's a threat to your safety, to the general public safety. Um, and it's extraordinary to do that. I had, I had the honor of doing that for a few years. And it's, it's, a, it's a tough job. And uh, so the folks that we have doing this on a day-to-day -day basis um, need to be acknowledged and uh, thanked for their willingness to do so. And so we have found yet another person who we've been able to coax into the public sector, um, <coughs> who's the focus of tonight's events. And <coughs> um, as our next interim chief, um, we have asked for and received the support of uh, Stephen Lee, 
Um, we often refer to him as Alex, but his, his full name is Stephen A. Lee. And um, Alex has stepped forward and has been willing to um, volunteer to be chief, uh, interim chief, for the next year. And as I've mentioned to lots of folks, um, being number one is different. It's just different. You know, I, number two, uh, number three is different. And so uh, it requires a much higher level of commitment to be in those decision making uh, positions because you can't say, well, if you don't like it, go down the hall, see that guy, or, you know, kick it, you know, down the road. So um, uh, Alex has stepped forward and agreed to uh, take on this position. And so uh, tonight we are going to uh, swear him in as he officially assumes his responsibilities as interim police chief for the Newport Police Department. So, um, Alex, do you want to come forward? And I understand that there's some members of your family here that have come to witness this event. Yeah, I have um, my children, Elliot and Griffin, my girlfriend, Kristen, my next door neighbor, Steve, all here for tonight. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do here is uh, I'm going to uh, read your uh, appointment, and then I'm going to ask you to take your oath of office. And then I think we're going to have um, one of your loved ones uh, carefully attend <laughs> your badge. I think we have some EMS folks in the back somewhere. In case, in case there's any mistakes, blood is shed. So, <clears throat> so if uh, you don't mind, I'm going to read this to you. Um, and then you can raise your hand and we can take you. So, <clears throat> this is to Stephen Lee of Croydon, New Hampshire, in the county of Sullivan. Whereas there is a vacancy as interim police chief for the Newport Police Department in said town, and whereas I, as town manager, have confidence in your ability and integrity to perform the duties of said office, I do hereby appoint you, Stephen Lee, as interim police chief of the Newport Police Department, and upon taking your oath of office and having this appointment and certificate for said office recorded by the town clerk, you shall have the powers to perform the duties and be subject to the liabilities of such office until another person shall be chosen or appointed and qualified in your stead. So if you'll raise your right hand <coughs> and repeat after me, I'll try not to make it too long so you'll remember. I, Stephen Lee, I, Stephen Lee, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will bear faith and true allegiance, that I will bear faith and true allegiance, to the United States of America, to the United States of America, and to the state of New Hampshire, and to the state of New Hampshire, and will support the constitutions thereof, and will support the constitutions thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I, Stephen Lee, I, Stephen Lee, do solemnly and sincerely swear, do solemnly and sincerely swear, and affirm that I will faithfully, and affirm that I will faithfully, and impartially discharge, and impartially discharge, and perform all duties, and perform all duties, incumbent upon me, incumbent upon me, as interim police chief, as interim police chief, of the Newport Police Department, of the Newport Police Department, according to the best of my abilities, according to the best of my abilities, agreeably to the rules, agreeably to the rules and regulations and regulations of this constitution of this constitution and laws of the state of New Hampshire and laws of the state of New Hampshire so help me God so help me God congratulations thank you very much congratulations thank you chief <clears throat> thank you all right so this is your daughter um my child okay come on up and let's do it don't hurt him <laughs> Too much. But this is probably the only time you get away with it. Ooh. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. So I think that concludes the police. Do well, we have one other thing. One other thing. Yeah, one other thing. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Paul Bodet. I'm the president of the Newport Police Union. Uh, our body would like to take this opportunity not only to welcome and congratulate our new chief, Alex Lee, but also to thank our outgoing chief, Barry Hunter. As many of you have heard this evening and in the last meeting from Mr. Reesburg, Chief Hunter stepped up in a big way uh, when he was needed, when we needed him the most. Despite being retired, Chief Hunter dedicated an incredible amount of time and effort to the town, our department, and to its members individually. It was a privilege for all of us to work alongside Chief Hunter for the last few months, and we'd like to thank him not only for his strong leadership, but also his friendship and unwavering support of everyone in the building. 
I know I can speak for every member of the department when I say that we are all better for having worked with Chief Hunter. Chief, on behalf of the police union and the entire department, please accept this gift of, gift of a custom engraved Ruger American 9mm pistol, which of course is the Newport Police Department's issued duty firearm. if you want. A lot more exciting stuff. Just people make it up. They're <laughs> 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 just zoomed in. No, I'd rather be. meeting January 16th 2023 do I have a motion on the minutes of those meetings of that meeting move to accept Second. any discussion changes anything uh, I've got a question on okay. page five okay um, on the next to last paragraph mm -hmm. it, uh, it states in parentheses 4.87 million dollars will need to be applied for from the federal government I don't recall if that's what was stated or because it's not right. We've already You're right. It's, it's right, and I noticed that the number is wrong. Uh, it should be 4.785 million, and we don't need to. We need to do a quote-unquote application for it, but we're the only applicant that can apply for it since it's designated for the town of Newport. You know, there's some paperwork that rural development wants, so however you want to phrase that, but it's, uh, you know. It's already awarded. Right, it's already awarded, <coughs> but not available. So, but yeah, with that number, the 4.87 should be 4.785. Maybe something like awaiting for distribution of funds. Would that be more yeah. appropriate? Yeah. Yeah, there's, a, there's just a... a for lack of a better term, a bureaucratic process that has to be gone through that finalizes the delivery, but it's been appropriated, uh, approved, and appropriated. Is that that, Mara? Um, no. <laughs> um, so, would it be better to just um, delete that sentence? If you feel as though 
Yes. Although we do have, although um, Hunter just said that you do have to put in an application, although the money has already been awarded, um, that's where that's where it, uh, I guess, uh, became confusing. So what would the, be the best way to phrase that? How about awaiting for distribution of funds? Instead of applying. Yeah, right. right. It's already been awarded. It's just, I mean, there's no real application per se. Uh, from the from the federal government period. Yeah. Period. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. And you got the amount, right? The four rather than four point eight. Four point seven eight five. Five. Yeah. Million dollars. Yes. All right. Anything else in the uh, minute? <coughs> All right. As amended. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Okay. We have non public minutes from uh, January 16th. So motion on so moved. There's a second. I'll second. All right. Thank you. Any changes? Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Okay. <coughs> consent agenda. On the back of your agenda is tonight's consent agenda. Do I have a motion on that? Move to accept. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Okay. All right, next up, this is open forum, the opportunity for any member of the public that wishes to address the board on items that are not on the agenda. But the public will be able to speak on agenda items when we get to them. Anyone willing to speak for open forum? Yes, ma'am. Could you state your name, please? Um, Margaret Coulter. Um, and looking for some um, clarification about um, the common use, uh, the Newport common use. Um, I've been a member of the Newport um, Farmers Market and we bring the donkeys on the common and for the past 11 years have brought our trailer <coughs> and bring the donkeys and we received a letter this year from Richard saying that there will be no trailer, no vehicles on the common um, and he um, suggested that I come to the planning board I called the secretary. She said, no, my question is best here. Mm -hmm. As she said, it was going to be a firm no because there was going to be a fence around the common. And I guess I'm looking for clarification about that for a number of different reasons. I mean, as pertaining to individuals and groups that use the common. The intent is to eliminate driving onto the common, having people pull up alongside, put their stuff on, and then pull into a parking spot or park on Park Street and bring their stuff across the street so that we don't get traffic going on to the uh, grass of the common. You know, we're trying to cut that down. So what will happen when the Library Art Center has their big, people need to put tents on the common and, and food trucks and um, what sort of fence for individuals who are handicapped? Are they going to have to walk over it? What sort of access does this mean moving forward? I don't think we were talking fence. We were talking curbing. Curbing. Yeah. You know, putting curbing there. Uh, there would certainly be provisions for handicapped people to get onto the common. But, uh, you know, right now people unloading on the main street side have to park on the street and bring their stuff on so people on the park street side it's, it's expected they will do it the same way so there will be no access I, I, it, it is our intent to cut down on the i would say the perception that you know people can drive to where they need to unload and drive off. If there is a certain necessity in a special case, that's the sort of thing that would I would imagine should be 
addressed on a case-by-case -case basis, most likely with the police department or the uh, town manager. I mean, it's so. But if, if you're going to put curbs up, there's going to be no special exception. That's going to block it off. There's going to be no one. You can't. There, there may. The actual details. You know, we're not taking responsibility for designing the layout, but certainly things are used on the common. The lawnmowers have to get up there somehow, and stuff. Uh, there probably needs to be some provision for if something has to get up there for some reason they can do it so there may be curbing on most of it maybe a couple of uh, barricades somewhere else that can be moved aside when necessary if something needs to get on the common you know I can't speak to the design of how things are going to be laid out the intent is to reduce the traffic on the common in the co compacting of the soils I guess I, I, most people are very pleased with how the grass on the con I mean I guess I'm wondering where this where the concern comes from for my program and for some others that's a vital I mean no access for us means we would consider after 11 years not being able to offer that opportunity to our participants because that's half of our program, bringing the donkeys and educating folks, and that's our uh, job for our mm -hmm. participants, as it is for many other activities that have. The, the apple pie, I mean, people, how are those big tents going to get up there if you've got curbing blocking it? I mean, there are a lot, that's, that's the public, that's the common is for access for all people. And if you're going to put something, we have individuals who have a very hard time walking to have to step up over something. There's handicapped parking in front of the, the, um, the post office. Yeah. You're going to say someone's going to have to walk way down with a baby carriage or a wheelchair or a walker. I mean, free access is important to everyone. Well, and from, from that spot at the post office, there's a crosswalk without curbing right there and pretty much having basically any sort of crosswalk you need to have access for handicap which is why they have that great stuff on there so there would not be a curb put in front of the crosswalks for people to trip over every time they go but that handicap spot is often t so yes, it's I'm not I'm not I'm just saying that at this moment in time everyone has has equal access to the common um, and curbing would limit that to wherever you decided there was breaks in wherever breaks were happened in the curbing as well as for events to happen the fire truck I mean <coughs> there are many activities that happen on the Newport Common mm -hmm. that involve vehicles that come and I think it will limit a lot of things. So. Right, and certainly putting curbing on Park Street will equalize the access to about the same as the people who park on Main Street and have to set up their booths from there because the curbing's preventing them from coming up and driving up onto the common there, yet they manage. I, th I, think, I think we're trying to get too much in the details and perhaps if you so what's meet, the next step? I would I guess suggest that's... you meet with uh, the town manager, perhaps the public works director, you know, and go over what specific needs you have that you need to get your trailer onto the common, you know, and such, and work out whether it's something he should come back to us and say, these are the exceptions to the rules. So <clears throat> it's our understanding, the takeaway that we got from the board's discussion and, and action was that we wanted to limit, minimize the motor vehicle traffic on the common. And there are a number of ways that that can be accomplished without hindering pedestrian or donkey access. Um, and we're, we're going to come up with a couple of plans between now and spring 
that we'll be sharing with you and you can look at and critique and comment on and we'll change them accordingly. But I think we'll be able to accomplish your goals mm -hmm. without hindering too many other people's access or anybody's access, frankly. Because believe it, we're really trying to protect the area around the trees. Mm -hmm. So, of course, the main street side is protected by that curb and then the curbing on Park Street side along the trees would certainly do that also. But I don't think there was anything nor is there anything in the north end, which is the, well, the skating rink. So yeah. there is obviously going to be access. Just how that's going to look. <coughs> the the under the the trees by the post office is the I mean, worst. Is the worst, but it's all shady. I mean, there's never going to be grass is never going to grow. I mean, it's it's shady, um, and when it rains, it's muddy. Um, and so, um, well, okay. My concern was that when it was said no vehicles, that it's not just us. There are many activities that happen on the common that need those big tents. Nobody's going to carry them from Park Street into the middle of the common to send up those big <coughs> circus tents. And so, no access is quite a statement. That's all. As I said, I think the details can be worked out, and honestly, if, if there's a huge heavy tent that's being set up for something on the common, uh, I would hope they contact the town office first to make sure, you know, to let the town know this needs to be done, and then more than likely they would probably drive onto the common by the crosswalk there in front of the bandstand and down to where they need to drop their stuff off and then pull off and park back on the street. Part of it is to eliminate parking on that side of Park Street, too. That's, it's amazing how many people like to park in front of a no parking sign. Mm -hmm. No, we, I, I guess I, we've always been very mindful. If it's rained, if it's been mucky, yeah. we don't come because I, I don't want to make big streaks down. Yeah. I mean, and I suspect most. Um, okay, so we'll wait and see. I, and and certainly give Hunter your contact information and ask to be kept informed. You know, so if there's anything, any input you want to provide him as to, you know, what about this or this is how we, you know, need to do this for our animals, you can take that into account. Okay. Because certainly, you know, I would hate for you not to be able to bring your donkeys to the common. You know, if you want to, you know, we, you know, if this, we need to figure out a way to accommodate you being able to present your donkeys on the common and our desire to limit wear and tear on the uh, grass surface of the common. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Any? Well, I think the whole thing came up because the town spends money maintaining that. And when we see cars parked on the grass over and over, that's part of the problem. And I think we're just searching for a solution. And the, whether it's a fence or a curbing, these are just ideas that have been mm -hmm. put on the table. I don't think we've got anything planned that's actually going to happen this summer. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, as far as constructing a curbing? Well, I think we could put down, you know, wooden curving doesn't have to be you know permitted but it's uh it's I guess the no parking signs have been less effective than we would like so we feel the need to what's the next step mm -hmm. and if it because if it's something that's I don't want to say too draconian but if it's something that impedes the you know, the kind of use that the common should be getting, then perhaps we can go back. So, which common? Okay. I, I don't want to say anything, we, you know, it's not like this is, well, it's not set in stone yet. We may do that later. But. Okay. So. I just. It's nice it's having nice. the feedback from yeah. the people that are going to be affected. Yeah, I think right. that, so that was you. particularly important. And yes. what sticks in my mind is it's part of your programming. Yep. And I don't want to get into an issue where we're preventing. And and that's what it, yeah. and and that's if we if we can't bring the donkeys, then 
our issue would be we can sell baked goods from the bakery we wouldn't need well, to yeah, be uh, but and then that line. takes away from our participants yeah, yeah, ability important. to be in the community yeah, I think we need to keep that in the forefront our goal is to lessen yep. the amount of vehicle traffic permanently stationed on the yep. w during it during an activity and I can certainly say after 11 years it's much better than it was it mm -hmm. used to be that everyone really did park yep along yeah. that yeah. Um, as well and over the past few years yeah. that has lessened and and the bench I mean we have a very narrow um, path that we can bring the truck and trailer between <coughs> the trash cans and the bench and so um, and we're very mindful that mm -hmm. you know their brand there's there's just a limited space where mm -hmm. we set up um, at the end so we don't the trailer doesn't yeah. the whole dynamics of how that happens. this is a work in progress we, we have a goal mm -hmm. that we want to have happen mm -hmm. but this is a work in progress and your feedback is good feedback for us to hear so. mm -hmm. perfect right. anything else yes sir state your name uh, Kurt Minnick about that the way I look at it is that the participants ought to be considered first and the grass ought to be considered last. And, and what I'm saying is without the participants and having activities down there, the, the common doesn't even serve its purpose. It's nice to have nice grass. We would all love that. But we've got to take care of the participants first and the grass second. Thank you. And uh, being, state your involved, name, please. being involved with the farmer's market. Uh, can you state your name for the record, please? Uh, Catherine Baird. Um, my observation this past year has been that with the presence of police patrolmen on a bicycle or on foot, um, or even going by in the cruiser and just stopping and checking to see if people are just unloading, we say, yes, I am, and you know, then I'll be parking over across the way in the parking lot. Um, because we don't want to take space away from customers coming in. We leave, try to leave the um, parking spots for people from town or out of town. And I think that um, the issue has been dramatically um, different this past year because of the police patrol presence. And people Good. respect that. Yeah. Right. Hope so. Good. Thank you. Thanks your name, please. John Lund. Um, the, uh, the real issue, and I, I've I was hoping that Barry might have brought it up, being on the Conservation Commission, is that it's the roots of the trees on that particular, along the line there. That's the issue. It's not the grass. It's that the roots are being compressed. The, the ground is being compressed where those cars are parking. It's compressing the roots and killing the trees. When they had an arborist come through last summer, we did a whole tour around the entire common. And, and um, they talked about every, every single tree. And five, five of the trees are, have come down. I don't know if they've all come down yet, but they've been replaced. Yeah. And others are, are in harm's way along that road because people are parking on top of those roots. So that's, that was where the issue, one, one of the real big things about that issue and why it started was because we're, it's killing the trees, not the grass. And so in looking at, so really in those trees, there's no way that a vehicle can drive, people could park by them, but a truck and truck, nothing can get between those trees to drive it's in. It's right there. along the side of the road there, the, yeah, the roots go in all directions. Mm -hmm. Right, but, but most people with trucks and trailers, I mean, we cut through <coughs> down below, or they come in the, the sideways. So what about a barrier where those tree those trees are? Right. And That's the muddiest part. And, and then you come around yeah. by the I can't it's between the there's a be open. Right. And so that if right. that's the area of concern, something that's but maybe movable so that if people could open it and lift I don't know, yeah, but it's something along those lines. Something yeah, it's called the North End of the Commons, wide open, no trees. Right, but but in my instance, then I don't want to drive way down there and have to turn a circle. You well, I'm, but your cons if the concern is the grass, I'm trying to do the least driving on the common that's possible. So if I, 
what I do is I come in and then I drive straight out to come around. That, but that's all. Okay, figured out. Yep. All right, Ms. Kirkman. If I recall, most of the trees that have had damage and been taken out over the last few years have been on the Route 10 side of the common. The uh, Barry. You're right. I think. Yeah. So I wonder if it's all the salt we put on our roads. That's state road, state salt. Well, whoever just throw a comment out there. I'm yeah. not, you know, not pointing fingers. It's all the salt <coughs> we put on the roads. Yeah. Yeah. Kurt, you're right. You're correct. There, but there has been damage on that side in terms of <coughs> the amount of compaction of the soil and damage of the roots. Same thing is going to happen. According to the arborist that we had in. But just trying to prevent that from continuing because it costs us a lot of fair amount of money to take those trees down and then to plant new ones. Uh, and I'm a member of the conservation committee, so I'm kind of watching that pretty closely. Okay. But again, I want to go back to the fact I think we need to take a lot of things into consideration. Our goal is to not have somebody come on and just park there with a heavy load. That's our goal, <coughs> but we can. So I don't want to interfere with your program, and you know. And I, I'm very keenly aware of that. You know, that's my part of my background, making sure things like that can happen. And so. and just in talking about it, what about if it was reframed to protect the roots of the trees? <coughs> we hear it as protecting, protecting the grass, grass. Mm -hmm. and so I didn't know. I mean, I see. I know. I have a better understanding of what it is that's trying to be protected. It's not the, the, yes, it's the grass, but the roots of the trees, that makes a lot of sense. And if it went forward also that way, that's mm -hmm. a different perspective than just saying it's the grass on the common that, because people have been saying, wait a minute, no grass grows there anyway. But that's not what it is. It's the roots of the trees. And that <coughs> is just a different way to look at it and makes it more willing, a, an easier working, goal to work towards. Yeah. Kurt? Um, I can probably show you 10, 20 dirt roads, trails through the woods where people drive all the time hunting, fishing, and those trees look just fine. Granted, the roots are up, they mud them, the trees just keep on. Trees are pretty resilient. And um, Sometimes, I am totally, totally on board with you, totally, because the, the, the big thing is damaging the roots. Right. Compaction has, in my experience, has little to do with it as much as if you start damaging the roots. But if you'll notice, a tree will quickly s scab that place over. That, you know, Whereas if you scab the bark on a tree, you'll get rot in there and the bugs will get in there. So the root system is pretty resilient. Observation. Mm -hmm. Anyone else from Open Forum? State your name, please. Kurt Spalding, Senior. Um, thank you for listening to their concerns. Um, careful, don't mess with success and tremendous success in the use of the common. So you've got to find a way to do both. You bring a lot too. It's a lot of walking back and forth if you were a distance away. And so to drive in. So if it's roots you want to protect, you can roll them off, can't you? But you're working on it, so that's fine. But keep that in mind, success is hard in the first place. And now that you have that success, it doesn't take much to lose it. Uh, I don't know what creates any more traffic congestion around that common than what's going on on that common at times. So that's a, uh, another issue is uh, I made a right to know request on January 25, and the request verbatim to view the following. I made this request under 91A, and 
I'm cognizant and all that are cognizant of this letter, including the town manager, but it is time that the public understands that there is an issue here. And I want to research this issue and find out where and what is causing it to go so long and the costs of what it, it's cost. So now I will read it. All documents that pertain to the petition to quiet title with Sullivan County. All notes, papers, and communications to you and from you to any and all board of selectmen on the above. All notes, papers, and communications received by you from Sullivan County as they relate to the issue above. Simply put, that you have everything on the above. The answer to that was, I am unaware of any such matters or documents. Well, so the county appeared here once. This has been going on. Let's see, that was when, uh, let's see, um, Paul Pressel was on the board at that time. And Sullivan County sat here with their lawyers and etc. And that's a significant amount of time. That's going on and on. It's my understanding now it's in arbitration or whatever. Well, I wanted to go back to the roots and I'm going to bring it right up through mentally so that I understand what happened by date, by issue. So when that refusal came, and I said, all right. And uh, so now uh, I put it quite frankly, playing dumb doesn't work with me. I want my information, no bullshit, period. So I'm looking for all documents concerning the ongoing disputes with Sullivan County concerning the Opera House slash Town Hall and related issues. Number one, copies of all legal bills for the above. For all of the lawyers that were involved, regardless of the firm or the number of years. Two, all court documents to and from that relate to this issue. Three, all other documents to and from that relate to this issue. All minutes of all meetings on this issue. I then get an answer, uh, and essentially what the answer says is uh, the court documents are currently available. My right to another request was not to the court, just to this, to this town. So first of all, I don't accept that at all. No excuses. I have a right to these documents. I will get them one way or another. And if, in fact, stone walls or obstacles are put in my way, then it gets deeper. I don't back off, and I have no intent to, period. So, Hunter, you can make this as nasty as you would like, because this son of a bitch is going to get his information to find out all of what has happened back and forth on all of them. So that being said, uh, your statement of how long it's going to take and get it together and I won't have it to April. Well, if the request is so large and you are so smart, I should think that you can do it in segments. I mean, I know you can give me legal bills. They go all the way back to the years. Okay, that might take you a half hour, hour, two hours, whatever it is. But there are documents that you can go right to right now and get. And you can start spoon feeding me. So if you want to delay everything to a April, my statement is when. And if you start that and, it's, and you do, it, do not do it responsibly, then what you have held back, which was reasonably accessible, then that's actionable and we'll go to court for it. In the story, I want my documents and I will get them. Depends on how hard you want to make it. Because my intent is clear tonight, and I'm not backing off, Hunter. Uh, I am not impressed recently with your town managership. I have said that uh, speaking on the uh, posted bridge, and your statement, well, that probably was for the road. The road end is up here, the bridge is here, the law says it. the sign's got to be up here, and you're supporting it here? <coughs> That's blind, Hunter. That's uh, um, at 
all costs defending the indefensible. Then, the weight limit being on the bridge, when a simple phone call to the New Hampshire DOT, no, not bridge has got a problem, but yet it's posted. And it hurts people. You don't understand that, maybe? This guy up here with a truck, the town of Unity, can't get down to the pit without breaking the law. <coughs> You're road graded. We've been through all of this conversation. It was all unnecessary. And now it's solved. Uh, and I myself have gone across that bridge and uh, made it uh, empty. And I said, wow, that's good. When I went back across it loaded, I, I felt better. Uh, and nobody's done any repairs to it, so it works fine. That and the Sand Hill Bridge thing, Hunter, um, uncalled for. Um, and that, I believe, will take care of itself. So, Hunter, I supported you, um, but you, uh, you're quickly losing that support. And, uh, and it's a tough road to hold. If I start questioning you on everything, I'm going to get my documents. So, how much of a fist fight do you want, Hunter? Thank you. What was the first thing you asked for? The first uh, request? What were you asking for in your very first 91A request? The, uh, when you have a property dis No, what, what was... Quick claim to Quiet claim. Quiet right? claim. Whatever. That's what that's You're your annual request. Quiet petition claim to quiet. quiet. Petition to quiet right. title. That's what I was. That's what I was giving right. you. Right. And I also I also responded to you and said that we have no knowledge of that. Do you know what quiet title means? I may not, but I also know that we have not had any request or any knowledge of that. And so. Okay. Well, if you know what it means, it means that any dispute between two of ours, you go to court to quiet title. I'm sorry if you don't understand that, but now you do. <coughs> okay, so you obviously did have a. <coughs> All right. So let me respond to your second one then. As far as legal bills, we can certainly provide that, and because we provided those to another individual under 91A in the past, Hunter has a fairly good knowledge of the amount of time it takes to pull those out, redact the parts that need to be redacted and then be able to provide them to you. Also, we don't have staff upstairs that are just waiting to respond to 91A requests. We have to make time for it, which generally means something else doesn't get done. Uh, some of the other things you asked for, you talk about the ongoing dispute between us and the county. Well, it's an ongoing dispute, and it's not open for public discussion because it's an ongoing legal dispute. Jeff? Give me what you can, okay? And we will. And in a timely, in a timely manner, without the excuses. Right now, you're defending the indefensible. No, I'm explaining that we've done this before. You're explaining your ignorance and not knowing what quiet title is, okay? <coughs> so I will compl I will take on some of the ignorance for not telling you that. Jesus, I, I really thought this guy would know what that is. I'm sorry, I'm not a lawyer, so. Well, you don't have terms. to be. A, you don't have to be a lawyer. But that being said, Jeff. Just give me the information. I'm not interested in your verbiage. I'm not interested in listening to you. What I'm interested in is getting it. If he wants to send me an email rather than saying the 1st of April to say, uh, Bert, it'll take uh, a week for us to get this and another couple of weeks to do that, so on and so forth, great. I can function under that. But to put it here, to kick that can down the road that time, that ain't going to happen. Hunter? So, <clears throat> the phrase petition to quiet title is a reference to a specific process, a petition to the court to resolve property ownership. When that request was made, and to this moment, there is no petition to a court to quiet any title. So, <clears throat> he got the answer to his specific question. His second request for 91A was more broad and more specific. I have reviewed that with our staff, his request, with our staff, as well as with our attorney, and <clears throat> sent him, I don't know why he didn't read the 
response I sent today, but I'd like to read that to you. It says, Dear Mr. Spaulding, thank you for your recent inquiry relating to matters pertaining to the town of Newport and Sullivan County. Given our understanding of the scope of your request and our present staffing and workload, we anticipate providing you with the requested information no later than April 1st, 2023, sooner if possible. The effort and time that will be required to respond to your inquiry are considerable. Please let us know if your interests or needs change over the ensuing time period. E.g., example given, court documents are currently available through Sullivan County meaning if he chose to not wait for us and went to the county and got those records, if he could let us know that, so we wouldn't duplicate that effort if that was the purpose of that statement. Thank you in advance for your understanding. And I've reviewed that message and the, and the, required, and the request for 91A with your attorney. And he finds it completely acceptable. Most communities these days are turning over their 91A requests to their council to respond to. We can do that. We may be prepared we may having we may be having to prepare to do that. I think I'm correct in noting that the city of Claremont spent over two hundred thousand dollars responding to ninety one A requests. If we don't have the staff, we'll probably re, you know respond in that fashion. We'll have to get some legal assistance to help put these records together. I'm reticent to do that for obvious reasons but it will take upwards of two months to get this material together. And it's completely acceptable under 91A. He's been given notice of the circumstances. I, you know, I don't know what else to say. Bert? I do. All of those words, Hunter, just to give you a bit of a You know, if you, there's some, out of all of what happened between <coughs> Solomon County and the town of Newport since you came to town, there has got to be something that you can readily give me. It's readily available, and the law says readily available. So you can go to your attorney. You can make it as complicated as you want. Notice my thrust here. I want to. I want to know the attorney bills. And I said all of the attorneys, as you've gone through, there's at least three, and all of the years what you've spent on this issue, fighting with your neighbor over what should happen with between those two buildings. It was, it is, um, to me, unacceptable for the public not to understand this thoroughly. Because to me, it is misbehavior. A good negotiator would have figured out a way to sit down with Sullivan County and boil it down and say, this is what we've got to do to make this work. O'Neill did that. So, with you, we have this big deal going with Sullivan County, which is still in operation now, I believe, I've been told. And then we've got over here, we've got the health center with the uh, pilot taxes, the payment and the taxes. Uh, again, since Hunter has been here, uh, that will be my next one to find out exactly what's going there. You're incorrect. Oh, it's settled? No. The uh, issue with the Okay, pilot I'll, I'll pilot finish and you can correct at the end. Chairman, I'll finish and you can correct me at the end, okay? okay. I'll get my point across my way as he got against without you interrupting okay. him. Okay? And then I'll correct your point. That's right. And so, that all being said, Hunter, I want to look at these issues and see what the true undercurrents are in them and why it's happening and how much money the town has spent to fight these battles. And when I get done, I'll have a conclusion and I'll make it very public. So that's going to say, hey, Jeff, I apologize for my misstep, misspoke. Now, you mentioned the pilot with the Newport Health Center. That is a dispute that Hunter inherited when he took over as town manager. That predates him. Okay. So. Yep. The negotiator might have sat down and negotiated it right then and said, hey, let's get out of this thing before whatever. But now it's now it's getting into big dollars, really big dollars. And the key thing to remember about any negotiation, <coughs> it takes two parties to negotiate. So just keep that in mind. Well, another thing you've got to keep in mind is from the public's point of view, you know, it's kind of like the person on the top of the mountain looking, at, looking down sees one thing, the person down here should look down at the bottom looking up some more. So that all being said, you guys <clears throat> just gave $300,000 a year away based on an assumption of, that I've made 
They put 13 million into the project. It's worth a million now. He gave it away. I wouldn't give it away. The property owner had a problem of what to do with it, and you're bailing them out. That's my opinion. So that's I need I need to look at the decision making process that's happening here and see why it is um, offensive. Uh, to put it starkly, you're giving up three hundred thousand dollars tax money per year, up to or maybe more. And the student, the, the kids that come in from other places into here, we've got to educate. So you're giving up money, and we're having to <coughs> find money. At the end of three years, yes, things are fine. But you didn't have to go that high. And I couldn't read or find where you had any conditions that you put on. None. And it was right there in the law. You can do that. You can say, um, all right, uh, we'll give you... We'll give it to you the first year and, and half of it the next and a third the next. Yes, you could have gone 15 years. You are spending our money like it's water in that particular instance. It's unacceptable. So maybe it's time that we start looking at things under the microscope and finding out a better way to do things. Or a different way. That's right. Not better, different. Oh, I see. So you're not looking for a better way. You're just looking for a different. Okay. Well, I'm saying your better way may only be different, but not better. Turn it around. Oh. Twist it any way you want, Jeff. It's what the public perceives that you have done. Hunter? Yeah, the only uh, other context I'd like to offer is that whatever differences <coughs> may have been going on between the town of Newport and, the, and Sullivan County actually started in the 90s and have been going persistent ever since. And it's well documented. All of us have said mm -hmm. that, it's well documented. And so the search for this 91A request spans now some 30 years. So it's quite in depth and requires a lot of research time. And finding lawyers' bills from 1995 is going to be fantastic. So mm -hmm. I don't know that the applicant understands the scope of that particular request that we do. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll be quite, uh, I'll be quite happy with the prospect of getting this all done in the next two months. Given the fact that we are on the eve of town meeting and we have 20, depending on how you want to carve it up, 26 to 75 million dollars worth of projects uh, coming our way, and we have no no additional staff. In fact, we could arguably say we have less staff, so we do the best we can. All right. Anything else to open for? All right. Moving on. Communication. Board of Selectmen. <coughs> Barry. All set. Keith. I have nothing. Jim. Nothing for me. Her? Nothing. Uh, just want to point out this is Winter Carnival Week. I think the uh, lighting of the, uh, what do they call that? <coughs> the torch <coughs> is uh, Wednesday night. Uh, I don't know what time, but I recommend people pick up a program. They're available here at the town office. Uh, probably a lot of the businesses in town, maybe the library, maybe at the school, but uh, and certainly uh, available on the uh, the uh, rec department's website. And that's all I have. Hunter, anything? No, thank you. All right, moving on. Informational. Community center update. Uh, community center. We are in the process of working with Red Loaf to finalize, uh, I guess, material list and such, and final details as they put the bid package together. Uh, we hope to have that by the end of the month and then be able to <coughs> get that out to see what uh, people are bidding on for this project. We've had uh, uh, concerns about the cash flow of the project and uh, we, Hunter and I spoke with our executive counselor about the state uh, uh, community center money and that we will be applying for that. And last Friday, uh, C CDFA, Community Development Finance Authority, who is handling that, 
put out the timeline and uh, <coughs> we should be able to apply for that and if we get accepted which I would assume we will since we have a project ready to go we should be able to have state money by June the federal money uh, we're doing some preliminary I guess responses <coughs> to rural development that they're asking for as they work through their bureaucracy to release the $6.785 million uh, that is earmarked for this project from Senator Shaheen. Uh, we would hope to have a commitment on that as to when we'll have that uh, shortly, or if not that, uh, the, I guess, the federal equivalent to a promissory note, which is basically uh, the same as cash from what we understand. They are asking for a few things from us, which we are getting together and should have to them. This uh, concern is we want to make sure that we have all the funding available pretty much in hand before we commit to anything. And before we also before we commit to anything, we need to see what the bids come in. At. And at that point, uh, the board will be looking at uh, what our options are and making a decision as to whether or not to go forward. The uh, key is to try to get into this construction season this year, otherwise a delay would only probably add at least half a million dollars to the cost. Anything, anyone want to add anything or any questions, comments? Question? Yes, ma'am. And state your name for the record, please. Lauren Stetson. Thank you. Um, the CDFA uh, money, is that the gopher that you've Yes. Been? Yes, that's the gopher money. It's being sent through the Community Development Finance Authority, you know, for distribution. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. I think you said from the feds, you said 6.87. I think you meant 4.87. Okay, 4.785. Sorry. Only, two, only a misspeak of $2 million. Yeah. In federal speak, it's... Repeated, $4 million what? 4.785. And, the, and it, the 4.785 was came up with because it's 55% of what the estimated cost was at the time we applied for it, which was the max that they could uh, supply for community centers or whatever pot that falls into. Does that process have a problem? There's no inflation in that. No, no adjustments for inflation, though. Uh, and where do we stand with the motion donations at this point? About three million dollars or so. Total, uh, <coughs> with getting the go for money from the state of a million dollars, we would have approximately eight point eight million dollars available. And Hunter and I spent uh, a fair amount of time with Cindy Warmington explaining just how the uh, go for money from the state <coughs> would complete our financing. And, uh, the fact that uh, this project would be a, something they can look at and point to as a see here's a good project we did for the state and uh, they can all come to the ribbon cutting and take credit for it. Any other, anything else on community center? All right, moving on. Action item, appointment of health officer, Fire Chief Stephen Yunus. We, do we have actual words we need to say properly on this to make it official with the state or do we just bless him? No, uh, you're pretty much just blessing him. Uh, this is, this it's, a state, is a, it's a state position that's on your recommendation. Right. Uh, this is a three-year appointment. This is a renewal of a second three-year term. Uh, does anyone want to make a motion to appoint Chief you can't, uh, you Health can't Officer? Make I make a motion that we appoint Chief uh, Steve Yanuzzi as Health Officer for Town of Newport. Second. Any questions, comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? All right. Thank you for the you honor. Got the, that's such an honor, Chief. Thank you for the honor. Yeah, you know, <laughs> great honor. I appreciate it. There's a lot of applicants. I bet there were. It's a competitive <laughs> yeah. selection process. All wanted to do it. Oh, 
calls our deputy. All right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'll make that motion. <laughs> I'll get the zone the hazmat suit to go with it. Moving on. Acceptance of terms of emergency management performance grant and authorized town manager to sign all documents related to the grant. Who's speaking on this? Uh, um, Mr. Chairman, this is a, a small uh, but not in, not uh, insignificant or meaningless grant. Um, uh, the grant requires the board to vote to um, accept, expend, and authorize me to sign as your authorized signature. Yep. Signatory. Um, the chief is here to explain what the purposes of the funds. This is it's pretty straightforward. Uh, this is a grant for. $4,150, 50% match for an update to our emergency uh, operations, plan. operations plan. Yes. Okay. And our match will be in, it will be soft match, so it won't be hard cash. It'll be the time involved in the meetings that we have. To, it's similar to what we did with the hazardous mitigation plan. Yeah. Okay. So we're on a, the last LEOP was updated in 2018, so we're on a cycle now. It's 5%. So 2023 is the year we need to update our plan. Kind of falls right in the hazard mitigation plan was done last year. We'll use information from that, move forward, and put it in operations. All right. Any questions, comments on this? Is this something that Upper Valley Regional Planning helps you with as well? They're, yeah, it's, they're going to be they're they're the ones we've uh, applied through the grant for them to go ahead and facilitate the, the process for us. Okay. Spalding, did you have a question, or were you just not about this, but for the chief? Something else? Yes. All right, let's take care of this first. Okay. This first. All right. All right. Does anyone want to make a motion? And the wording required for the motion is available here if someone wants to read it. And throw in the part about designating the town manager. Move the select board. Threatening in government ease. Yeah. I need a dollar for this. 4150. Move to accept the terms of the emergency management performance grant as presented in the amount of four thousand one hundred fifty dollars. Um, furthermore, uh, the board acknowledges that the total of this project cost will be four thousand one hundred fifty dollars, which the town will be responsible for a fifty percent match. And authorize the town manager to accept these funds and uh, uh, act as a signatory. Second. Any questions? All those in favor, say aye. Excuse me. Yes. Um, is that, uh, let's see, in the amount of $4,150 for the town of Newport, or? The total will be double that, uh, that $9,300. Yeah. 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 So, the, the town, $8,300. The grant is forty one. 50, and the total cost is 8300 All right. The line screen, at the very beginning, there's a space and then a period. So line two, it's four thousand one hundred uh, fifty dollars for question mark. That would probably be for the update of the update of uh, the local emergency operations plan. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All set. All set. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Abstaining. All right. Bert, you had a question for the chief. Yes, it appears that the generator that's thrown out here has a, a periodic test where they fire it up or it fires up automatically on the other. And uh, it is quite loud <coughs> to the meetings here, particularly in the summertime. And so <coughs> the question is, can that time of start off the testing be relocated to a time it doesn't interfere with meetings? Doesn't mean somebody has to know where every meeting is. That's not the generator. What is it? Yes, it's the, the air evacuation unit. Yes. 
That's the air evacuation unit, correct? Yeah, when the truck starts up, that's the, that's the, uh, yeah. that's the sure. diesel ventilation. Yes. The, he's correct. The evacuation system activates for approximately five minutes every time that a vehicle is activated inside the building. Right. Take out uh, fumes of the building. The um, generator is on automatic tests, which occurs Mondays during the course of the middle of the day. Uh, so it should not interfere with anybody's scheduled meetings. And meetings. Now, in theory, <coughs> if the U.S. Department of Energy ever releases our grant for new windows in this building, right. we'll be able to put new windows in here that will cut down on the sound filter infiltration that we get from the generator. And in the summertime, if we also get the HVAC system in here, we may not have to open a window. So it should benefit us that way. Does the air vac system uh, have to make that sound? Yes. Is it? Uh, can it be surrounded by soundproofing on itself? That I don't. That would that would prevent that noise pollution. Hunter, the time that uh, equipment was installed, uh, we did inquire with the manufacturer, and they. Uh, this is going back several years, so I'm pretty close. I believe that they had a device that would reduce the sound by 20% for a cost of nearly the same price as the entire system. It was very cost prohibitive and had a very limited income benefit. Yeah. Basically a muffler. Yeah. They, they wouldn't assure that it would reduce the sound by any more than, I believe it was 20%. Yeah. Something like that. Some marginal yeah. adjustment. <coughs> It does get annoying at times. If only they weren't responding to all those uh, emergency calls, we wouldn't have this issue. But to your to your point, um, the I, we think uh, we think that the DOE's approval of our grant the grant that we submitted uh, to them for new windows and the HVAC system is on the verge of being uh, released, and it's our hope uh, that the, that contract will be let within the next 30 days or so, and we'll see construction in the spring as soon as weather will allow. There'll be all new windows in this building, all the windows in the fire station, as well as any HVAC system in this building. Answer your question? Soundproofing that can, have, can be put on that unit that would cut it down significantly out of the source without changing anything. And it is uh, This is what we got. No, I'm not going to search to find out what it takes to sound um, radio stations you know, all the time. And yeah, it's, it's not a big deal, Jeff. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, it's not. I mean, the guy selling you the whatever he was selling you at, at a high price to, to do it, um, and the business to make money. The question is, what could you do at this point to tone it down? And then when you do your windows, you won't even do that car at the front. By the way, they have motors on cars because not all of them make that noise. Yeah, we're going to do the windows first, I think. All right. Anything else for the chief? Thank you, chief. Chief, you can dance on out of here. Did you like that? Thanks, <laughs> guys. Okay, <clears throat> next up for action items, Wright Pierce Beard Wastewater Treatment Plant. This is for engineering services for the construction of the uh, wastewater treatment plant or the modifications to the wastewater treatment plant. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, this is, a, this is a partial and I'm sure uh, woeful effort on our behalf to try to keep the board in step with What's a, what is developing at the wastewater treatment plant. Um, as you know, prior to my arrival, the town was, uh, found itself at odds with its contractor that had been brought on uh, to bring the wastewater treatment plant into compliance with the pending administrative work to improve, the, in short, to improve the quality of the effluent coming from the wastewater treatment plant. Following several years of 
uh, litigation, that matter was resolved. We've since brought on a new engineering firm to design and to assist us with the construction of a revised plant design that will bring us into compliance uh, with, this, with the EPA's administrative order. And I believe using a tried and true design that is well-known, well-supported, and expandable or scalable as the town's needs go forward. However, <coughs> the cost of that system for the sake of this conversation is now hovering somewhere around $28 million. Um, we have spent a considerable amount of time working with um, the uh, EPA, with uh, the United <coughs> States Rural Development Agency, and the State of New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services to try to fashion a funding package that will reduce the impact of this $28 million to the very few users of the sewer system in Newport. <clears throat> I believe that it's safe to say that, as it's been represented to us, that the funding that we have amassed on this project is, and Paul can correct me if I'm wrong, but we have been led to believe that it is second to none in its scope in terms of the enormity of the funding that we have secured through many days of negotiations uh, with these agencies. Um, they are supportive of Newport. They understand our intent. They want to help us achieve this goal. And we have, I do believe it's safe to say, uh, secured an extraordinary and heretofore pretty unheard of level of, of support for this effort. But be that as it may, and I, I don't recall, it's about 14 million in various funds, sources, totals. Yeah about 14 million, so we're about half of the funding of the projected 28-ish million dollars. I, I will caution you to, to keep in mind that nobody really knows the, the final numbers until the bids go out and come back. It could be 26 million, it could be 27 million, it could be 37 million. But the engineers that are involved are quite highly regarded for this kind of work and their best guesses are 26, 27, 28 million. There are various stages of design work. There's preliminary design, and there's final design, and so on and so forth. Um, and so we have been contracting with them as we go at the various uh, phase, phases of the various levels. And we have put online in the last few days um, the results of their work from the last contract we did, which is called the PDR, or the Preliminary Design Report. And if any of you care to crack walnuts or find a way to uh, get to sleep, um, I believe there's 535 pages of the design work that has been done thus far. With pictures. With designs, schematics, pictures, and the whole nine yards. It is online for anybody who wishes to sign on to the town's website and read through this. So now we're moving to the next phase, where they'll get into construction documents and more, more detailed analysis, if you can believe that there's more detail than this. Well, the proposed contract <coughs> for that work um, was authorized at $571,620. But to get us this far. So to take us the rest of the way, or at least up to the time of bidding, I shouldn't say the rest of the way, because there's still construction to follow after that. To get us to the bidding phase, or moment, the recommended or requested contract with Wright Pierce is $1,169,226 for the next step, which will bring us to $1,740,846 committed to get us to bid. Now that sounds like an extraordinary amount of money, and it certainly is. Certainly. And in particular, when you think about it in simple terms, is that it's going to result in a big pile of paper, a lot of designs, a lot of specifications, a lot of drawings. When, in my own perspective, I would much rather see, you know, a million dollars worth of bricks and mortar. This is what we have to do to get to that point. It all has to be reviewed and approved by state, the feds, USRDA, and so on and so forth. 
this is a will be a heavily overseen, heavily regulated, heavily reviewed project. So <coughs> um, the proposal, which I have a hard a hard copy here for it, for anybody that cares to uh, look at it, this is the proposed uh, next phase design contract. And it details the number of hours and who's working, how many hours with the lead, lead principal, project manager, project engineer, and so on and so forth. So um, but this contract is a million seven, oh, I'm sorry, one million one hundred and sixty nine thousand two hundred and twenty six dollars. So I really didn't feel comfortable moving forward with this without making sure that you're aware of what is going on. It's a lot of money. This proposal has been reviewed by the state and their engineering division and has been reviewed by the U.S. RDA, another financial partner in this, and their engineers with the wholehearted and enthusiastic support of both. They have approved this contract as being acceptable, a reasonable number, and they will stay, and there's provisions in here for them to sign that they intend to sign this contract as soon as we do. I may ask them to sign first, just because it'll make me feel better. You know, I was the last signature on the document. But it's been through all their engineers, and everybody is now waiting for us to sign this contract so the process can continue. Um, just by rule of thumb, uh, not necessarily applicable in this case, but by rule of thumb, and put it in some context, typically engineering designs often run in the 15% range of the final construction costs. Um, I, I think we figured this out today, it was about 5%, 4 point some 5% of the overall cost. So it falls well within, well beneath what is typically kind of arguably around the coffee table agreed upon to be typical engineering fees. <coughs> so we're ready to go, but I wanted to make sure that you were aware of where we are and what we're doing and the costs uh, that are being uh, committed to. Um, as I said, this document is online. We have a public informational being held or scheduled for the, the Opera House so that we have our engineers coming in to give a presentation to the public as to what this is all about, what the costs are, what the grants and funding package looks like. That's the meeting on 22nd. Um, yeah, 22nd. Yeah. 22nd of February. 22nd. Okay. <coughs> and there will be another similar presentation done by a different engineering firm at the Opera House to go over the small, much smaller project, and that is the development of a water well in North Newport. Three and a half million dollar project. Three million dollars we applied for and, and pursued, and we're fortunate enough to win. So we're at 14 million we won on this project, three million on the other project, but the water project will require a, a $500,000 uh, bond match. match from the townspeople. Still a great return, 500, you get 3 million, and you get, a, you get water security for generations to come. But anyway, that's a separate topic, but we're going to be giving public um, public presentations of both of those at the Opera House. And there'll be presentations to this board um, on um, uh, the uh, date that we've selected for your bond reviews. So it'll be another opportunity, those same engineers will come here and give those presentations to you during that meeting that you've identified as being a meeting for bond issues. Um, we have covered both. Oh, let's see, in the last Newport Times, we covered um, the uh, wastewater treatment plant. There's going to be a more detailed story in the next Newport Times about the wastewater treatment plant where it's going to delve into the funding side of the, of the situation. Now that the money is set, kind of settled, the budget is kind of settled. Over the last month, month and a half, we, can, we feel comfortable sharing some of the numbers that we don't expect to change very much. And there'll be a story in, um, in the same Newport Times about the North Newport well. So we're doing what we can to get the word out to as many people using the limited resources that we have. Mm -hmm. Yes, do you, sir. Do you know if the NCTV will be there on the 22nd? Um, I believe they have been invited, yes. I haven't heard John commit to that, but I believe that I believe he has been invited. I, I think I remember Joanne saying that they were planning on doing that. Who? And CCTV, <coughs> which would be great because then they could yeah. run it. You know, right. This uh, one point one million dollar contract for this next phase of engineering work. Uh, <coughs> Paul, is there money for that? Yes. Yeah. Not our yeah. money. What? Not our no. money.
So what? this is being paid for out of which whose money? Fourteen. The uh, first six hundred thousand will be paid for by ARPA, uh, and then I'm not sure if there's any congressionally directed spending are next up, or if we'll go back to our state revolving loan fund loan. Did we get any congressionally directed money yet? Yes, we have. Uh, uh, well, I mean, do we actually have it in the bank? No. No. Okay. So it's in the same, somewhere out there. We, like we, did, know, we, we did know earlier in the day that some reason, for some reason, USRDA seems to be comfortable with spending that money, although it hasn't been delivered. But they're not comfortable with having us spend the money for the community center, although it hasn't been delivered. It's a little bit of a different perspective. Yeah. yeah. But it, anyway. <clears throat> This, this CDS will actually be coming through the uh, State Department of Environmental Services. Okay. And I think they actually have it in the bank, but I don't know that. So I, I would like to take this a quick moment to say to you that the State of New Hampshire and USRDA staff have been exceptionally cooperative and supportive of our efforts to achieve this goal. They, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a rare and unique, or not, it's a rare and new kind of approach to working with municipalities that has been lacking in previous decades of we're here to catch you because we forgot to mail a letter on a certain date or God and I or across the T. And they really have partnered with us um, and supported us in this effort. And I believe they've done a very good job of helping us find the money for this effort. You know, okay. it's having sat in on one of those Zoom calls with RDA, I mean, they needed some convincing to be able to commit as much as they have. And I think Back when they made their commitments, the total project cost was at least a handful of millions of dollars less. The cost has been climbing. And I seriously think we need to hit up RDA some more before we go to town meeting and say, yep, yeah, we need to. Well, we, the EPA says we have to do this, so we have to bring this forward and present it to you and make a case for it. It's an awful lot of money, even with uh, someone else picking up half the tab to put on four, well, 15, 1,600, mm -hmm. or even less sewer uses, basically. This is going on the sewer rate. Mm -hmm. You know, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, Because, you know, the initial response at RDA, you know, talk about how great they are. Their initial response was like, oh, just put it on your, put it on the bill, you know, they'll pay it. And I think I was a bit upset with them at that point. And they need to know that it's, you know, the price is going up. And uh, certainly the ability of the people in Newport to pay these bills going forward <coughs> is climbing. So... And the benefit of all this is not here in Newport. So it's going to be a hard sell, I think. We basically have an obligation to present it and try and sell it, but it's going to be up to the citizens to say and make the final decision. I mean, certainly the EPA can start fining us for not going forward. But, uh, I, you know, I think RDA needs to look at the new cost of this project and maybe step up a little more. But I think, you know, since, since this funding is coming out of uh, money that has come from the feds one way or the other, you know, I think we basically have to go forward with the uh, this next phase of engineering so we can find out what the actual cost is. This is a it's a big number. Bert, glad you're not on the sewer system, aren't you? What is it that we call the um, rainwater moving system? 
storm, storm, storm water. water. Okay. Currently, that's still going in. I don't know. In every system, even a brand new one, there it incurs a certain amount of what we refer to as II info and infiltration. There's a certain amount of groundwater and stormwater seepage that can get into the system. So yes, right now there is a meaningful amount of stormwater getting into or groundwater getting into our collection excuse me, collection system. To get rid of that you would have to start having to do rather large wholesale replacement of mains. To reseal to put in new mains, replace damage mains, reseal mains. Um, <coughs> We do leak detection to try to find the most egregious leaks because of the area that the joints or the cracks in the old pipes. And some of those leaks are significant and can contribute greatly to the gallonage, making it to the treatment plant for treatment. Um, <coughs> it's in most cases not cost effective, but we monitor the system to find stormwater, surface groundwater, surface water leaks. And when we find one that is significant uh, and there's a cost benefit to fixing that, we, we do fix those. Um, but in, the, in this case, the wastewater treatment plant, it's not a matter of being over capacity. It's a matter of not producing effluent that is of a quality that's acceptable to the EPA. Bert? So this new plant, will be subject to the, the same criteria that you just said, right here, see, leak care, so on and so forth. So you're paying one dollar to clean water that uh, really didn't need to be cleaned. Is that a fair statement? I would, <coughs> I would, I'm asking the town manager. Well, let me, his, his, his statement here, we know we have this problem. Yeah. We've had this problem since yeah. Forever. Yeah. And so that water is going into the treatment plant and being treated. At what cost? And here we're talking maybe as much as thirty million dollars. No. Yep. Um, what what would it take to to change that so you didn't have to deal with it? Can you can you take that water and put it somewhere else other than through the sewage treatment plant? If you could separate it, if it was separated? So <clears throat> if we were to have a magic wand and be able to wave that and take somehow the groundwater, the, the surface water runoff, the leakage through manhole covers and all those kind of things out of that system, it would not change the nature of the effluent. This system is designed to reduce certain types of chemicals, effluent quality, that is not, then not being not currently being removed and it's being discharged phosphorus for instance uh, is not being removed from the effluent discharge and that phosphorus <coughs> uh, one example is being discharged into the sugar river so there would be less gallons but it's it's the quality of the effluent that needs to be changed because the the, the fate the state as agent for the fed epa is saying that the quality of the effluent that we are discharging to the river has too many pollutants in it that need to be removed. The new system will be designed to remove those offending elements. And it, it, it's not so much the, qua, qua, the quantity of effluent, it's the quality of the effluent that is the target. Pleasure of the board. Who wants to make this motion? <laughs> I did the last one. <laughs> Ain't gonna cost you much. All right, so I guess it's the other side of the room now. <clears throat> I mean, from a, a selfish perspective, I'd be glad to have you have a, a, a vote on the on the record, but uh, unless somebody tells me not to do it, <laughs> I just kind of have to go ahead and sign it. But. I move we accept the bid of Wright Pierce uh, for continued development of uh, planning for the wastewater treatment plan. Do I need to give an amount? Yeah, state the amount. Somebody's got it. 
so we can make sure you're one million one hundred sixty nine thousand two hundred and twenty six dollars. Yep, what did you have to say? Is there a second? Yep. We have authorized assignment capabilities also. Yeah. I'm not trying to. And I'll also here. authorize like the town manager to sign and uh, deal with issues dealing with this uh, proposal. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? All right. Well, at least that was 1.1 million of other people's money we spent. Is there anything else? Still aye. Aye. It is. All right, we have a budget review session uh, this Thursday at 6.30. Paul, this is, Paul, this is public safety on Thursday, right? Public safety on okay. Thursday, yes. Okay, and our next meeting is uh, in two weeks from tonight. Is there a motion to adjourn? So move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so